Hello, everybody, and welcome back to day three of OXGVC, the Oxford Geoheritage Virtual Conference. Apologies that we're starting a little late. Totally my fault, as, as the prophets would have told us anyway was going to happen. My internet died about four minutes ago, so I'm beaming to you uh, via some mobile phone signal. Thank you to everyone who's joining us live from all around the world. You are most welcome for session five, which we have six wonderful speakers joining us from all around the world to discuss a variety of topics in geoheritage. Um, but I think we should just get going and find out about some uh, lovely geoheritage. So I'm gonna uh, call up onto the screen. Uh, Tony, how are you? Hello, Jack. Uh, thank you very much, I'm fine, and you? Excellent, thank you very much. Um, uh, Tony, Skamaka is going to talk to us about from geodiversity to geofunctionality, a case study on French Guyana and implications for sustainable land planning. Wonderful topic. There are your slides. If you want to go into presentation view. Yes, here it is. It's... Can you see it? I think it will just be uh, loading. I can't see it. You can now. Has it gone? Has it gone onto the other page? Uh, yeah, now it's in a presentation uh, mode. I don't know. Ah, I it. think, I think it's because you've shared the window. Right, just for a moment. Uh, it's quite okay. If you if you cancel that screen share, I'm going to take that off the screen. If okay. you cancel that screen share, yes. um, put your PowerPoint in, into presentation mode first and then okay. go through the system again to do a screen share. While we're waiting for that, we'll just remind okay. everyone joining us from around the world that if you have any questions for today's speakers, we're going to have a question panel at the end of the session. So do put your comments either in the YouTube comments section, underneath the Facebook uh, live stream, or indeed on our Discord channel where you can share questions as well in the special questions thread. I can see that we have a wonderful presentation now ready. Uh, Tony, you have 14 minutes to wow us with some wonderful news from French Guyana. Take it away. Thank you very much, Jake. Hello to everybody. Everybody, um, good morning from, uh, from, good afternoon actually from, uh, from Palermo, where it is really, really hot. So I am Tony Scamac. I'm a researcher in, uh, at AgroParisTech, which is a French research institute. And I must say, I'm really happy to have been given the opportunity to, to be with you today. So thank you very much for, for, uh, for attending this presentation. And I will show you, I'll present you a collaborative work, which has been uh, done with different French research, uh, French and French Guyanese research and, um, and academic institutes, and which uh, talks about the switching from geodiversity to functionality with a case study on French Guiana to discuss the implication for sustainable land planning. So uh, first, sorry, it doesn't move. Okay, sorry. So first of all, the objective behind this project, uh, it was to develop a methodological and conceptual framework to support land planning through the revisitation of the concept of geodiversity and its components. The main idea, it is actually to, uh, to uh, consider geodiversity in terms of natural capital. So uh, in terms of properties and processes that uh, underpin uh, different, uh, uh, different functions. And uh, so switching from the diversity in itself to a functionality. So to the functions that natural capital can, uh, can achieve to satisfy the individual and societal needs. Uh, uh, and which can reflect different land use and land management practices, which go uh, beyond the simple conservation, the simple, the only conservation of the resource, but that might transform, exploit, extract, artificialize, or even destruct the resource, and therefore affect positively or negatively the, um, the, the geodiversity and its functionality. So the idea is really to integrate geodiversity and uh, its function within a land uh, planning support uh, framework. As I said, 
the main idea behind it, it was to go from what it's, we may call taxonomic diversity. So in terms of uh, typological variability of the geodiversity, which might be assessed through different uh, indices that, uh, that or, or methodologies that might uh, concern the ab abundance or, uh, or, uh, um, or um, richness or frequency of different entities within the space uh, based on different uh, classification referen reference databases to switch to a functional diversity through the properties and processes of, uh, of geodiversity. And so to assess what we may call geoecosystem services, ge geosystem services or abiotic uh, ecosystem services. We, may, we have a lot of definition over there as well. Uh, the, this methodological framework is uh, constructed around three main axes. One main axe concerns geodiversity. And so it is the, actually it, uh, it aims to identify and evaluate uh, the different entities located within a territory, their interaction and their, their functionality in terms of ecosystem service or geosystem service supply. A second uh, axis is uh, land use, which aims at um, identify in detail the different types of land management and land uses, so of utilization of the resource that we might implement within a territory to, uh, uh, to uh, think about uh, management uh, strategies and development strategies. Uh, identify land use type, that it means to go within, in detail when we uh, characterize land use uh, concerning the, its uh, uh, horizontal variability. So, for example, we have urban planning, we have mining, we have uh, agricultural projects, we have industrial projects, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and also horizontal uh, uh, variability. Uh, sorry, vertical variability. So we have mining, yes, but we have small mines, big mines, industrial mines, art artisanal mines, or uh, we have um, uh, we have uh, small agricultural projects, we have intensive agricultural projects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And finally, the third axis is scenarization, which aims at uh, combine all those uh, all those uh, those two main points together. So the idea is to uh, propose to develop based on different objectives decided by local stakeholders uh, to compare different scenarios in which uh, you uh, might implement different uh, uh, man, uh, different uh, land planning strategies. For example, in one case, we want to implement more. Uh, uh, urban plan, urban projects in another one, more agricultural projects, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And the idea is to compare them based on their impact on geodiversity and its functions. What we try to do is to try to start to develop the first part of this framework on French Guiana, which is an overseas French territory located within the, the, the Guiana Shield, which is a paleoprotozoic, um, uh, which is a sorry, a craton which is located in uh, South America between Suriname and Brazil. Uh, as you can see here in the geological map, to simplify it, we have mainly a paleoprotozoic uh, crystalline basement, which cover almost all the territory, and finally also a um, two uh, sorry a sedimentary unit, which is divided in a more recent and an ancient constant plain, which is mainly uh, uh, composed of uh, uh, clay, silt, and sand from the Quaternary period. Uh, also, within these uh, formations, we might find two uh, greenstone, greenstone uh, uh, belts, which cross the territory from uh, in a, a northern and a southern stripes, strips, um, and it is where uh, most of uh, gold mineralization often occurs. But what is interesting, especially in French Guiana, is that uh, uh, more than 96% is covered by the Amazon rainforest, and at the same time, you have uh, intensification of anthropogenic pressures in terms of demographic growth, uh, urban sprawl, uh, agricultural uh, intensification as well, uh, mining gold mining activities. And uh, geo resources have been historically and uh, currently targeted by extraction activities, as I said, particularly gold. But now we are increasing also, we have also increasing conservation interests for the geoheritage, paleontological, and archaeological potential of. Uh, French Guiana uh, geo resources and also their link with biodiversity uh, support. Uh, so, uh, for example, as I said, uh, this is uh, some pictures that I wanted to show you about the uh, the, the mining activities that are currently uh, that are currently uh, 
going on in French Guiana from artisanal gold mining to a bit more uh, a bit more important projects or illegal mining. And um, so, as I said, those resources are uh, have been uh, targeted by such extract extraction are targeted by extraction activities. But now they have also increasing uh, cultural and geo heritage interest. For example, as you can see here on the right, you have the Savannah Roche Virginie, which is an important Inselberg of uh, a granitic Inselberg in French Guiana, which is an important hotspot for biodiversity support, but also for geotourism. Also here, uh, I don't know if you see my arrow, but here the picture, um, which is uh, down on the right, it is uh, the Roche Carapa, and it's uh, um, an engraved rock by pre-Columbian uh, population, so which represents an important uh, patrimony, cultural patrimony in French Guiana. And more recently, as you can see here in the central picture uh, on the down line, you, uh, uh, um, the fossil of a giant slot have been found by illegal gold miners a few months ago uh, in French Guiana, and this has been an important uh, discovery for a paleontological interest. So, as uh, because of all those reasons, let's say that French Guiana it is a, a very interesting territory, and most of all, a major challenge for socio-ecological management, conservation, and sustainable land planning. So, uh, this is also a perception by local communities and by by local actors. Uh, for example, this is just a picture that has been done during a public debate concerning a gold mining project, which showed that anyway, the population is very involved in what's going on in their territory, especially concerning geo resources. But at the moment, mostly from an extract an extraction an extraction point of view. Sorry. So what we did it we was to implement a, a widely used method to evaluate uh, geodiversity, which is the method proposed by Pereira in 2013. We developed a 10 square kilometers grid cell uh, layer that we um, on, in French Guiana that we intersect with uh, different thematic maps concerning lithology, mineral occurrences, geomorphology, uh, hydrology, etc. We did the entity counting. We followed the same criteria uh, that are exposed by the methodology, and we assessed mean, uh, geodiversity sub-indices that we summed up to obtain a final geodiversity index. So it is a uh, standard method in a certain way. But what is interesting for us to do, so after we uh, interpolated the index, it was to, first of all, what we observed, it was that uh, most of, uh, of, the, of the, let's say that the most uh, important geodiversity high value clusters are located along the two Winston belt formations, most specifically within the northern one, which is uh, an area which has been First of all, the most, prospect, the most uh, prospected by, by, by miners, for example, and by, and by research institutes, but also because it is an area of uh, uh, contact between the crystalline basement and the sedimentary unit. But what it was interesting for us, it was to take the geodiversity index and overlay on it different uh, entities and socio-ecological features that might uh, indicate or, uh, or uh, let's say, yeah, that might reflect the uh, different utilizations of the resource. For example, in a first case, we have all which is related to extraction activities such as squaring, illegal mining, legal mining, and as you can see, they are often concentrated along the greenstone bed formation. Also, we start to we overlay the data concerning uh, the different points of geological interest. Uh, so, for geoheritage, for example, potential. Uh, as you can see, they are mainly located within the northern part. This also for a, a problem of accessibility. So there is a question of data production and data availability, which is incredibly important here, and which might uh, which might create a bias within the discussion of for the discussion of such results. And also we overlaid some uh, some uh, characteristic concerning everything which is protection and preservation of of uh, biodiversity hotspots such as uh, different European measures or what is called in France this NIEF, which is uh, which represent the high value ecological zones for in uh, for inventory and which are often based in French Guiana on uh, on uh, um, lithological uh, criteria. So what it was interesting for us is that we assess geodiversity, we, des we qualit qualitatively sorry described uh, the potential interaction that with uh, that could be between geodiversity and and uh, uh, and the functional and, and land use features that are present in the territory. And we said, but 
we should go further probably and uh, and may we can con maybe we can consider such such features as proxies or secondary data to assess functionality in terms for instance of raw material supply when it comes to uh, extraction activities geo heritage valuing when it comes to point of geological interest in french guiana or for instance biodiversity habitat support when it comes to protection areas high value ecological zone etc cetera, etc cetera. for instance if we uh, compare an average geodiversity index per municipality with the relative surface of the high value ecological areas located in French Guiana, which can be used, as I said, as a proxy, we might see that uh, there are different areas with high geodiversity value, but with very low, uh, very low, um, uh, uh, very low um, SNF percentage, surface percentage. And on the opposite, we can see anyway, globally, that geodiversity and geofunctionality don't always follow the same patterns. One minute. So what, thank you. So what we tried to do after it was to assess geofunctionality in a quantitative way, which is what we are still trying to do. We are, this is a, a work in progress. And uh, by what we, it was interesting to do, it was to compare geodiversity index and different services quantitatively assessed and, and find out the difference uh, between geodiversity and geofunctionality. So to conclude, geodiversity, geodata availability, it is, is a major challenge for sustainable land planning in data scarce environments, such as French Guiana. Therefore, further studies should be encouraged within the territory to acquire more data and finer special data. And finally, which is, was the main point of this presentation as well, is that Geodiversity alone is not always enough for sustainable land planning. What it is important to get, it is also the contribution of geodiversity to socio-ecological functioning of a given area. So say that, I thank you very much for listening. And if you want to know a bit more about that, near this, uh, this uh, spider, you can find the publication which, uh, which, uh, which has been accepted with minor revision for Geoheritage Journal. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. And as always, if you have any questions, please do put them in the comments. Thank you to Tony once again. Um, a quick announcement, especially if we have anyone in the audience who's presenting in session six, um, please check your emails because we have sent you the wrong link. So you have got an updated link to present in session six and to Raphael, who is hiding in the background of this and has turned up, uh, you are you will now discover that you are in session five. Um, so you, Raphael, you are free to leave session five from presenter view uh, and make sure you pop back into uh, with the new email that's been sent out. Just apologies once again. It seems like session five is the the technical failure session today. But without further ado, we're going to hop over to Amina who yes. is joining us. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? Excellent. Thank you very much. Amina is going to tell us about the inventory and quantitative evaluation of the Tingir geosites from Morocco. Wonderful. There are your slides and your 14 minutes begins now. Okay, thank you. Hi, everybody. I produce myself. I'm Amina Barada, Moroccan student in the University of Notofer Kinetara. The next year, uh, the next year doctorate. My subject is the geological sites of Tinrir, Morocco, inventory and quantitative evaluation. The plan is introduction, presentation of the study area, methods, results, and finally conclusion and perspectives. I can say that geoheritage is a hot topic because Haunted Atlas includes several geocities, but many people not specialized don't know the geocities because any inventory had been published. My objective is to inventory and quantitative evaluation of geocities. My study area is localized in the Haunted Atlas, uh, exactly in Timrir, Sorry, in Timrir, uh, on the Atlas Oriental. I will use the method of Bridia 2016, who takes place in two stages. The first one is to inventory the juicet, and the second one is to evaluate it quantitatively, uh, inventory juicets. Uh, 
uh, for the first step, I will start by geo historical geocysts. The first one is Annif rock carvings. It's localized in Annif, and this rock and these rocks uh, have a multitude of slight representation like elephants, rhinos, and gazelles. The second one is mine mineralogical geocysts. I start by several deposits in localized in Emitter, and he can say that it's an international geocyte because the site of its deposits, the 10 silver producer in the world with an accumulation of more than 8,000 of metals. The second one, it's mine, the Grand Bonhas. It's localized in the west of Anti Atlas, and uh, they have he takes copper, carbonate, sulfate, and then examples. And you have two examples here. Uh, he he said that all these minerals from Ordovician formations. Uh, the third one is paleontological geocytes. I start by three, uh, three lobbies from Alnif, Shibel is more. He takes many uh, three lobbies, for example, he have four here, very well preserved and from elephant uh, formation. And the second one is dinosaur footprints in Isil 8RB. It's localized in Isil 8RB. Uh, all this localization in the Anti Atlas Oriental and uh, exactly in Tenrer. And we can say that dinosaur footprints are only evidence for the existence in the lower Jurassic of the Atlas. And finally, the geomorphosites. I start with Dades Gorges. In the picture, we can see a very good disc uh, discordance figures. And the second one, monkey fingers. A picture who see many monkey's fingers in the Dades Valley from Upper Jurassic Formation. And finally, caves of carbonate bars. Uh, two pictures who, who see this case. And it's from Lower Jurassic Formation. To conclude that all this geocide, or the most of them, have a scientific education and potential moderate height potential and the risk of degradation too uh, low. So you must to protect all the, these geocides for the next uh, generation because the first one, uh, Morocco, it's too rich of geocides and the exploitation it's uh, vasted, so he must to protect the suicide for the next generation. Uh, for my future work, I will complete the inventory and quantitative assessment for a new suicide. Thank you for your attention. Merci beaucoup, Amina. Uh, Wonderful presentation there. And of course, if you have any questions to Amina or anyone else, do pop them in the comments under the live streams or in the Discord server. I'm sure all our presenters have worked very hard on their presentations and deserve a few questions from you. So thank you again to thank Amina. You. Thank you. So, all of our presenters are going to stay with us and we'll have that question period at the end. Um, I'm just going to use a few minutes to give a few reminders before we see the next talk where we'll be zooming across the Atlantic, staying in Gondwana, though, but zooming across the Atlantic uh, to Brazil. Uh, but before we get to that, a few quick announcements. Firstly, a reminder that as well as the talks, and the flash talks. We're going to see 10 wonderful flash talks this afternoon in session six. Nearly caught me out there. Session six, we'll be seeing 10 wonderful flash talks. That session will be chaired by Lubomir, who will be whizzing us through those flash talks. And a reminder to all of you presenting in session six 
please do check your emails. You've been sent an updated presentation link, which you'll need to present in that session. And also, uh, after that, uh, about 15 minutes after the end of session six, will be our third poster session. We have nearly 50 posters being presented this year at OXGBC. As have all of our presenters, they've been working very hard. And so please do check out all of their posters, which you can do so on the link that is available in your delegate email. You can then get access to the OXGVC Google Drive to view all of the posters at your leisure. But particularly after the sessions today, there's a poster session for about a quarter of all the presenters where you can meet them online in the Discord server and either chat to them via text or over audio and visual and ask all the questions and debate the hot topics in Geo Heritage. Now, at this point, I am going to uh, welcome onto the screen uh, Silas. Silas, how are you? It's a great pleasure to see you the, the first time on, on the video conference. It's a, a, a great pleasure, really. And uh, the first thing that, that I have to do is uh, send kisses and hugs for my colleagues from Serial Geopark. And my kisses and hugs for, for them. It's an honor to participate from the OxyGVC uh, 2022. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for those kind words, Silas. Um, of course, two things to say there is one that, of course, uh, I'm sure everyone in the audience is sending their congratulations to uh, Cerrito, the n one of the new UNESCO Global Geoparks uh, announced this year by UNESCO at the recent executive board in Paris. So congratulations to your Geopark. But also, just before we get on to your wonderful talk, we should also embarrass you by mentioning that Silas is, of course, the designer of the International Geodiversity Day logo. So as you see more of that out and about on social media and around in all different forms, as we move towards that celebration on October the 6th, Silas is the man behind the design. So now you put those two things together. So without further ado, I'm going to put your um, slides on the screen. Oh, oh, the slides aren't appearing. Oh, there they are. Oh, got me worried Thank for a you, moment Jake. there. There are your slides. <laughs> and we're going to hear about mining and sustainable development in Cerrito, UNESCO Global Geopark in Brazil. You have 14 minutes, Silas. Take it away. Let's go. Uh, uh, good, good morning from Europe and uh, other parts of the world. And uh, I will start my presentation, uh, make an ask for, for uh, my listeners and uh, for a reflection. It's possible uh, make mine in, uh, in geopark territories. It's possible the uh, mutual convivence and uh, geoparks and geoconservation with mining. It's a good question that we will respond on, on this work. Well, I will present the uh, introduction with the context and the study area and, and, and uh, the methods of work with the uh, Catch uh, mining site description and uh, sustainable development in mining analysis. A geological context about the uh, Borbonema province. It's a part of uh, a segment of ancient continent Gondwana and the uh, Pegmatite and Cerdoshalite province. And uh, about the results, I will present it about mining and sustainability, uh, geodiversity and mining in relations in territory, uh, geomining uh, landscapes uh, in the educative and tourist uh, use too, and uh, the sustainable development promotion by mine. And the final, uh, uh, some considerations about the, the, the question that uh, I play for my listeners. One, 
Perth, Perth is a, a old sweet home ha that has been built during the last uh, uh, four point six billion uh, years. And uh, as we remember our childhood memories in your house, the Earth uh, is your memories too. Uh, the mineral resource uh, and the, the other parts of geodiversity are a relevant piece of the Earth's memory. Then we, we have to understand uh, mineral resource and as a, a geodiverse element, but we we need to understand the mineral resources as a important part of uh, Earth memories too. It's a, a question that we uh, we need uh, better uh, work in geoparks. About the sustainability and the uh, uh, sustainable development, we have. Uh, uh, in the final of uh, 21st century, uh, the, the first prepositions about uh, sustainable development and uh, the definitions of SDGs, for example, uh, about the 2030 agenda of the uh, United Nations, uh, we have goals for transforming the world. And uh, the mine and the, the promotion of the, these SDGs uh, linked uh, economy uh, mainly, and uh, we have uh, some difficulties to promote social and uh, environmental axis of uh, sustainability. And uh, this is this sustainability uh, needs uh, a, a, a whole natural environment. Uh, we need the geodvised uh, include better on this SDGs uh, definitions. Uh, as a great uh, 2021 say in, in his paper. And uh, in 2015, we have the, the creation of International Geoscience and Geoparks Program, the EGGP, and uh, we have uh, the exceptional areas with uh, geological value uh, as a basis for sustainable development. Uh, as a motivation for this work, we, we have the mining uh, inside Geoparks territories, understood uh, by one way of uh, one way source of conflicts and threats. Um, without the geodiversity, we have uh, uh, mineral. Uh, we have uh, a part, an important part of geodiversity, hidden, and, and we we need, uh, for example, understand better how this relation. It's important for geoconservation and geoheritage. The mine heritage can be a, a, a comprehensive key, key of mineral resources, a whole to society and sustainability. Well, about the geopark Serdor, we, we have, uh, uh, as I say, uh, the second Brazilian geopark of UNESCO uh, across along uh, uh, 12, 12 years of inventory, education management, and governance works. We have six mun municipalities and uh, 3,000 uh, area, uh, 3,000 kilometers, uh, 12 kilometers area with the uh, 21 geo sites and the uh, geo heritage ba based on neoproterozoic mineralizations uh, and the uh, Cenozoic relief and the volcanism. And the uh, important question for this work, it's possible to promote sustainability together mining in geopark territories? Well, for this, this work, we use the uh, uh, process of uh, national agents of mining Brazil, of Brazil. And uh, we have to make, we have to, uh, geodiversity indices of silver and collaborators to enter uh, 19. Uh, for uh, to many landscape and description and evaluation, we have the work of Professor Kudman that we provide a description items for uh, understand better uh, mining landscape. Uh, uh, and uh, the final part of the work, we uh, use 
postulates of monet uh, application and an integration for understand better as the mind and the, in the final we have uh, the serdogio park as a promoter of sustainability in together mine uh, about the geological context we have uh, the Borbonema province it's a part of uh, ancient con continent Gondwana, and we have uh, blocks and the uh, uh, Proterozoic Tehens. Uh, of Serdogio Park geology, we have uh, Metamorph and the uh, uh, in uh, Neoproterozoic Neo age that provide uh, uh, fluids and uh, hydrothermal and magmatic systems to mineralize. Uh, tungstenium and the molybdenum and gems and other other mineral resource. About the results, uh, we have uh, uh, the 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 composition, the historical composition of Cerdo territory. Uh, the science says the, the the beginning of colonization in uh, seven seven. 17th century, we have uh, our first explorations of Dutch expeditions and Portuguese Portuguese expeditions uh, start uh, searching for mineral resources. But just in, in 20th century, we have a uh, mine starting as uh, alternative economic for uh, for uh, a, a main uh, main way to uh, promote. Uh, a better economy in territory. And this, this Erdogan Park has mineral resources as protagonists of geoheritage and cultural heritage. As this example, in dinheiro and money, pegmatite, we have a legend, legend about the, this landscape. Uh, in state level, the Erdogan Park highlights uh, with the uh, a lot of occurrence uh, is about uh, 20 percent occurrence of the Rio Grande do Norte state, with the uh, four four hundred occurrence uh, about the, this metallurgical province that I say, and uh, this territory has a uh, uh, 40 percent of all mining process of the the state. With uh, seventy percent of all territory, with mining, uh, we have a growth, uh, a historic growth, a long time across the time, uh, evaluation uh, to uh, recent period. I'm sorry, this light. Uh, don't work well. And uh, about relations with the short price index, uh, uh, this slide don't work well. It's a jump. Some presentations, sorry. And uh, we have this relation with the geo sites and the geo diversity index. Uh, uh, and we have uh, a very high and high price in this. The mine are present in uh, together the, the high variability and diversity of uh, geodiverse elements. And we have positive and negative impacts uh, together the geo sites, the 21 geo sites. Uh, and about the, the landscape of uh, two, pre two major geo sites is to that uh, mine Brejui geo sites. It's a, a tungstenium a mine. Uh, it's a geo situ, uh, a geo site from Serdogio Park. Uh, we have a, a landscape uh, regarding a story of 20th century and uh, how the territory grows with the mining along the, the historic time. Uh, we have a, 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 a whole with mining uh, along the territory associated with this geosite. Um, cultural manifestation 
for uh, for uh, in release and on the the gel side analyzation too and gel products are to uh, the mina brasil gel site we have to we have to the musealization of this uh, and uh, here we have a, a valuation uh, uh, according the Kulibakova uh, system. We have a good values uh, for scientific uh, elements and values near uh, touristical signaling and the uh, instruments for conservation. And other uh, size that it's uh, a Sudi Bokerão that we have uh, uh, mineralizations associated with the pegmatite rocks uh, from uh, Cambrian period. And uh, we have gems and uh, exploration of meta conglomerates and the quartzites for uh, dimensional stones too. Uh, and here we have the, uh, the largest mine of Paraíba tourmaline, that is the most valuable gem uh, in the world. Uh, it's about uh, 20, 20, 20, uh, $20,000 per uh, carat. One minute left. And uh, here we have uh, uh, symbols form and uh, the fracture form as a prison for the species to the of quartzite uh, uh, ornamental rocks too uh, we have the have uh, historical works historical papers here too and uh, the valuation we have as a mina brevisual site a good valuation for scientific and additional values and uh, about the sustainable development promotion by mine, uh, some geoparks in the world, uh, as I say, uh, uh, technical reports of UNESCO 2020, uh, as uh, Kekituai and uh, Kuril Mountains and Tuscan geoparks uh, has de developed geotourism in native mineral resource explorations. And uh, in this geopark, Serdal geoparks is not different. In the uh, Mina Brejo Geo site, we have the pro promotion of social and uh, environmental and economic acts, the uh, diverse actions uh, for transform uh, his communities. Uh, we have a uh, better uh, work in the in economic efficiency, but we have social too. Uh, as an example of uh, with the geopark on the, the geo site Mina Brejui, we have a, 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 a educational activity promoted prom prom in the last week. Uh, we uh, a, a special of uh, a fun with the uh, basic education uh, students. And here we, we have the, the relation with the SDGs. Uh, the eight to uh, tw uh, 12 XDGs for uh, better efficiency in economic efficiency. The other uh, minor company studied in now in, in Asud Bokerão Gel site, we have Silas, we Brazil can, Paraiba Mine. Silas, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap up because you've had one minute? 15 minutes. So you, need to, you need to wrap up very, very quickly, I'm afraid, because it's now the time for the next talk. Okay. Okay, uh, jumping to the, the, the final considerations, uh, we have the Serdojo Park promoting the uh, 17 SDGs uh, for each uh, SDGs. And uh, we have uh, some considerations about mining sustainability. We have geodiversity uh, needs to include bar in the mineral resource team. We have uh, a great part of Serdão Geopark associated with the mineral source exploration uh, to uh, possibility to work mining uh, inside UNESCO Global Geoparks. We have mining as a relevant connection to promote sustainability and the monet is a successful mechanism to understand uh, sustainability in mining. 
and uh, the twice companies have promoted favorable, favorable actions to sustainability uh, development. The companies uh, have a better de development in the economic efficiency axis, and the Ceridogio Park has a potential uh, in promote sustainability development in mining industry through the partnerships. And finally, together we can turn the mining more sustainable with the geoconservation. Thank you so much, and sorry for the, the late in presentation. Thank you, Jack. No problem. Thank you to Silas for a wonderful presentation. I'm sure if you have any further questions, you can put them in the comments or email Silas and the team directly. We are going to zoom on to hear about 3GEO, an IGCP project. I'm going to invite uh, Irini onto the screen. How are you? Nice. Thank you. And you? You're doing wonderful, very well. Thank you. So we're going to hear about geoclimbing and geotrekking in geoparks. There are your slides ready to go. 14 yes. minutes, Irini. Take it away. Thank you very much, Jack. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am here on behalf of all the of, sorry, all the participants to this project to show you the preliminary results. The project is a UNESCO IGC project of the International Geoscience Program. It is named 3GEO, that means geoclimbing and geotracking in geoparks. Uh, the main concept uh, from which we start uh, from is uh, lithological geodiversity that feature planet Earth. As you can see here, this is a chart that shows us uh, uh, the different type of rocks uh, grouped uh, according to their genetic family. And we can see how vari uh, varied they are uh, all around uh, planet Earth. Um, Rocky outcrop uh, may have a different, uh, um, different type of use, for example, by man. In, this, uh, in these uh, pictures, you can see uh, a, a rock uh, cliff in of a volcanic origin keep, uh, for climbing. We are in Sardinia, in Italy. And uh, below, you can see uh, a different type of rock. Uh, um, and uh, along this kind of outcrop, uh, uh, trekking routes uh, are developed. We are again in Sardinia. So in a, a little uh, space, we can see very different kind of rocks. Uh, so, uh, where this attractive landscape uh, can be seen all, ar all around the world, obviously, but specifically in uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks, in aspiring area that uh, uh, would like to be uh, in the near future UNESCO Global Geoparks, but also in other kind of protected areas. The idea at the base of this project it is uh, to um, empower other activities uh, to to sustain our science dissemination. Geodiversity, as we know um, very well, uh, provide abiotic ecosystem services. This is a very famous uh, sketch pr uh, proposed by Gray. Uh, and in, in this specific uh, project, we focus mainly on cultural um, ecosystem services. Uh, more in the specific, uh, we work uh, on uh, uh, environmental quality, uh, that is, uh, for example, a therapeutic uh, um, effect of landscape uh, along trekking routes, uh, or uh, other type of activity, like cli rock climbing or, again, trekking, that provide possibility of geotourism and leisure. Uh, very, very important is uh, another um, kind of cultural uh, geosystem service that is related to education we can see a picture of uh, several students going along a um, hiking path, uh, exploring uh, uh, glacial gorges of places in Glacier. It is also important because uh, this means uh, employment for uh, people living in the territory and new occasion to develop for the territory itself. Uh, all around the world, there are several uh, witnesses of Earth history that are uh, equipped for climbing or uh, um, known for trekking. Uh, these are two examples, one in Italy, in the central Italian Alps, uh, and on the left, where we can see a big rock avalanche deposit, uh, now uh, no more active and now equipped for climbing. It is one of the most famous areas for bouldering and uh, free climbing in the 
Italian Alps. Uh, on the other picture, we can see the very famous national monument of Devil's Tower in USA. Uh, and we can appreciate, especially at this uh, site, uh, how the particular shape of the rocky outcrops um, ask for specific climbing technique. Concerning trekking, there are several trekking, very famous trekking all, ar all around the world, like uh, uh, in Iceland, uh, the Laudavegur Trail, or in Italy, um, that uh, are very uh, influenced by geology and geomorphology feature. And the Morenic Trail, for example, on the right, uh, is a trail running uh, competition that uh, is uh, mm, planned each year, apart for the <laughs> COVID period, uh, where a runner can go along all the perimeter of the Morenic Amphitheater of one of the most important places in Glacier uh, of the Alp, that is the, the Balteo Glacier. So it is a nice occasion to combine sport activity with earth science uh, uh, discovering. The project Trigio uh, was born in 2021, thanks to UNESCO that funded uh, it. This is, uh, we are at the end uh, of the first year. Uh, in, in several countries, uh, up to now 11 countries are involved. You can see the list and the map in uh, this slide. After this uh, first year, uh, the, um, uh, we have collected, uh, using uh, this uh, spreadsheet, uh, study sites uh, where focusing on the analysis of geoclim uh, geoclimbing activity and the geotracking uh, tool. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, 24 geoclimbing sites and 28 geotracking. Uh, we um, we tried to select it, uh, them uh, in order to show geological and geomorphological complexity of planet Earth. Uh, in this uh, kind of database, we are collecting geological and geomorphological settings and information, uh, scientific values, so the presence uh, uh, of geosites, uh, recognized or not yet recognized, and additional values, including cultural and socioeconomic values. Moreover, potential for use in terms of accessibility and services is evaluated too, as well as the presence of uh, protected areas. Uh, the spreadsheet uh, is still in progress because some sites uh, uh, should be added in the, in the future. From uh, this preliminary statistic, you can see the distribution of the proposed sites in different countries and in this uh, um, graph, uh, we can see how not all the sites selected are geosites, uh, official geosites, uh, but some of them are anyway important, as for example, a uh, geodiversity site. Now we are proposing you a short uh, journey across all the um, geoclimbing and geotracking sites we are working on uh, to show you um, our uh, field of activity. We start from the Central Iberian Zone uh, with Spain and Portugal, two of our, uh, of our partners. Here we are in Portugal in the Estrela Glo uh, UNESCO Global Geopark. As we can see here, there is beautiful uh, granitic uh, outcrop as well as as boulder uh, related also to glacial activity. In Spain, in the nearby country, uh, in the same uh, tectonic context, uh, we find uh, the Peñalara and Pedriza area in the Sierra de Guadarrama Park National, uh, where uh, in the first case we have climbing activities and in the second case we have uh, uh, important trekking routes. Uh, Permian granites also outcrop in the southern Italian Alps. We, we are moving to Cesia Valgrande UNESCO Global Geopark. Uh, here we can find um, beautiful granitic landscape and landforms where trekking and climbing, as you can see from the pictures, are, uh, are, uh, are possible. Um, this, uh, this place allows also to see, uh, to have a look at the lacustrine um, morphologies of the area and moreover very important is the uh, connection with the georesources because uh, granite represents a very important georesource of the area where uh, local guides uh, guide peoples and students of school mainly uh, across uh, to visit uh, these important sites for society. In, uh, in the Italian Alp are also important the other kind of rock like metamorphic rock, uh, rocks that testified for their Sinian and uh, Alpine orogeny. Uh, we can see here gneiss and amphibolitic outcrop. 
And where in the Alps, we have an uh, important uh, glacial witness about Pleistocene glaciation uh, up above, uh, where uh, we can see the trace of glacier uh, during the Pleistocene, uh, um, as well as the most recent uh, uh, glaciers uh, witness as here in the um, Upper Sesia Valley. Um, the, meta um, the metamorphic basement is also um, characterized also the case study proposed by the Brazil unit. Uh, we, are, we move to a very wide landscape where um, a, a project of a geopark is now undergoing, the geopark Serra do Sincora, uh, that we hope it will become uh, a UNESCO uh, global geopark soon with a specific of this uh, morphoclimatic uh, geomorphological context. Uh, from the basement to the sedimentary coverage, uh, we, we have another partner, partner that is the Oman. Uh, in the uh, east, western, uh, sorry, western side uh, uh, to Muscat, uh, the partner selected the two uh, main uh, sites where uh, uh, trekking routes uh, may develop, that is the Snake Gorge and the beautiful Jebel Sham uh, Carbonate Platform. Carbonate uh, dominates also the landscape of uh, Tatra Mountains and Central Carpathian, uh, where the, mm, the colleagues from Poland are working on. And you can see here beautiful trekking uh, route along gorges and beautiful rock cliff uh, uh, shaped again in uh, granite. Uh, the limestone landscape is very impressive uh, in, uh, in Crete. Uh, we are now in a very long-lasting UNESCO Global Geopark. Psyloritis is one of the uh, oldest uh, geoparks uh, recognized in the global network. Here we are um, in presence of a very uh, impressive limestone uh, walls where gorges uh, are uh, sculpted and also uh, sinkhole um, uh, wall are equipped for climbing. Uh, sedimentary coverage are, are also represented by sandstone. Uh, we are making here a comparison be between the uh, sandstone from southern Italy in Sicily, in the Appenninico Magrebi, the mountain chain, where uh, the Rocca di Cerere UNESCO Global Geopark uh, is uh, uh, founded. Uh, they are compared with the sandstone um, outcropping in the Karoo Basin in South Africa. They are other two partners uh, of the project. Uh, last but not least, uh, there is the volcanic component uh, of geodiversity. Uh, we now move to India in the very famous Deccan Trap volcanic province, where a site for trekking, that is a Sundance Lot Canyon, and a site for climbing, that is Taila Bala, uh, uh, have been selected for our uh, aims. More sites are under evaluation in the, in the other participating countries. Uh, 3GO project not only allow, um, aimed at uh, collecting this site, but also uh, we aimed at creating 3D models and multimedia tools to allow uh, the, um, the enjoying of uh, this uh, area also from remote. Uh, the idea is to create a data repository for users to discover the worldwide geodiversity. These are some examples of the first uh, elaboration in, the, um, in some of the case studies. Uh, concluding, uh, we can see that uh, geosites uh, um, already recognize or on the way to um, mirror geodiversity of planet Earth and influence deeply uh, outdoor activities like climbing and trekking. Outdoor activities demonstrate uh, to be powerful, to get in touch with geoheritage, not only with young generations, but especially with. Uh, geosites are important witness of Earth history, so that, uh, there is the need to raise awareness on their value um, for their protection. If they, they are used for climbing or are located along trekking routes, uh, the awareness of people is a key strategy for preserving uh, these important localities, avoiding an unregulated approach to them. So the use of multimedia tools and 3D models uh, help all these uh, uh, consideration, support this, and in particular, uh, they may boost knowledge on geoheritage because they are very attractive uh, tools to discover, especially for young generation. They may help in visiting remote places. If, uh, we hope not, uh, but uh, if uh, there will be again a restriction condition like COVID, 
um, and ensure to preserve the integrity in case of uh, fragile uh, sites. Uh, we are uh, planning as a project to have a meeting during the week of the 16 European Geoparks Conference. Uh, you are invited to join us uh, at the conference during September. Uh, we will be in Italy in the Sesia Valgrande UNESCO Global Geoparks and you can find all the information in the website that you can see below. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Irini for our wonderful presentation on the climbing and trekking elements of GeoHeritage. I'm sure that's got everyone's brain cells thinking. So thank you once more. And if you have any questions for any of the speakers, do put them in the, the comments. But we are going to now zoom back to Gondwana, where we will meet Soledad. How are you? Hello, Jack. How are you? Very good, thank you. We can hear you loud and clear. I'm going to put your slides up on the screen there. So I think you're all ready to go if you pop those into presentation mode. Can you see my presentation now? We can see it, but we're still seeing it in the PowerPoint design view. OK, I let's see now. To... What about now? That looks perfect. So okay, thank you. it looks like you're ready to go for us to hear all about an overview of geodiversity and geoheritage in Argentina. 14 minutes. Take it away. OK, thank you. So good morning for some of you. Good afternoon for some others. I am Dr. Soledad Schwartz and together with Dr. Andrea Coronato, we will present an overview of geodiversity and geoheritage in Argentina. We've been working together for 15 years now in geodiversity and geotourism. We are professors at the National University of Tierra del Fuego in Ushuaia. And my colleague, colleague also does research at the National Council of uh, Science and Technology here in, in Ushuaia as well. So we are very pleased to be here with you today, celebrating the next first International Day of Geodiversity. Um, it's not moving. I'll start again. Here we go. So Argentina is in the southern extreme of South America, as you know, and on its continental part, it comprises an area of about 2.8 million square kilometers. Uh, it extends from latitude almost 21 to 55. And it has also a very um, extensive longitudinal area. Uh, on the eastern side, you have almost 5,000 kilometers of the Atlantic Ocean coast. And to the west, we have the Andes Cordillera from north to south along 3,500 uh, kilometers. So uh, now I am talking to you from Ushuaia down here at the southernmost city in the world. Uh, in Tierra del Fuego province. So at the moment, we are about almost 14,000 kilometers far from you there in Oxford. So this uh, huge country uh, provides the territory with, um, together with its uh, geological history, its rich geological history, with more than 30 different geological provinces uh, all along the country, from tablelands to highlands, uh, mountains, ranges, cordilleras, coasts, volcanoes, that to with, together with um, very diverse uh, climate conditions from tropical to cold temperate, and these areas have many more divisions inside. So these um, characteristics give unique features with a great variety of landscapes uh, resulting from diverse climate and this uh, rich geological evolution. So these sceneries underpin a valuable geodiversity and offer massive opportunities to learn about natural history, of course, under the scope of the Earth's uh, sciences. So this wide range of geo resources, which are worthy of conservation, not only because of the arsenic beauty, but also because of their intrinsic value and its uh, geodidactic potential have some positive and negative aspects that we have studied. 
Among the negative aspects, we can mention the fact that we have no specific law in the country that safeguards geoheritage for itself. We have a huge system, a federal system of natural protected areas with more than 200 areas located on all these geological provinces and climates, but they are mainly based on flora and fauna. They were created uh, on an ecological basis to protect endangered uh, species. And surprisingly, in Argentina, we do not have any global geoparks declared by UNESCO. However, we have detected some uh, positive aspects, and among them, uh, we can mention that we have a law that protects uh, one specific element uh, among geodiversity resources, which are fossils. We have a national law that uh, forbids the manipulation of um, uh, paleontological records, but this is just a very small part of uh, geoheritage. Uh, at the same time, some national institutions have adhered to the Geodiversity International Day uh, proclaimed by UNESCO, and also some enterprises have been developed in order to promote uh, geotourism. Uh, geoscientists and tourismologists together have been working in geodiversity as a new domain of research during the last at least two decades, and an evidence of this is the fact that the National uh, Geological Congress uh, has included a symposium on geoheritage on its program since 2014. One of the major good aspects of geoheritage in Argentina is the fact that in 2008, the National Geological and Mining Survey selected 72 sites of geological interest all across the country but at first sight, and considering the vast extension of, of this uh, country, uh, this list seems not to be enough. In fact, the list does not imply any kind of a specific regulation. Um, just to, uh, for you to know, 54% uh, of these Gs are not under any kind of regulation, and the rest may be included in provincial or municipal or national protected areas, but again, and in general, not because of their geodiversity, uh, which is usually undervalued, but mainly because of the ecosystems and uh, flora and fauna. The 72 Gs are located in all geological provinces of Argentina, and they include materials and processes, endogenic and exogenic, uh, of the different 12 periods of the Phanerozoic. Here you can see in this column that we have the 12 uh, periods represented with the Quaternary as the best one. And we even have some uh, geo resources from the Precambrian times. So in this sense, this presentation aims to share with you just five examples of these uh, Gs, which have a very offered, uh, they offer different geological functions that you will see in the following slides represented with a GF, but they also were created in different geological periods. So whenever in the following slides you find the GP, that stands for the, the time when these uh, resources were created. So let's travel somehow together now and let's start uh, by the first point, which is uh, the ranges in the center of the Pampas Plains uh, at the center of Argentina that show basement rocks with a marine sedimentary cover that include stromatolites and acritarchs of oceans that existed during the Precambrian. There are also moving rocks, you can see some of them here, and these are the oldest rocks and fossils of Argentina. They are 2,200 million years. This site is part is part of a provincial natural reserve where geotourism could be developed in order to teach visitors about fossilized microbes and um, marine transgression, as well as the Earth's crust, especially during the existence of Gondwana, the supercontinent. Moving northwards, I will take you to Iwasu Falls. We can mention this uh, complex of 275 waterfalls that testify fluvial backward erosion since the Cretaceous up to the Quaternary. 
the eroded basalts uh, cover a vast area formed after successive lava flows with a thickness of 1,500 meters, the largest basaltic lava flow on Earth. This happened when South America and Africa were together, so rocks of Iwasu can be found in Western Africa. This site has 90 meter high cascades with sharp fluvial erosion. They are part of a national park that was created in 1934. And the site was even declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO uh, in 1984. Despite all these interesting features, the tropical biodiversity of this place, the jungle, somehow masks geodiversity to the 1.6 million visitors it receives every year. So now we are going to the Puna uh, in the north of the country, uh, where monogenetic volcanic cones form during the Quaternary, and they exhibit a group of Strombolian volcanoes that outstand in a high plain, which is located at an average altitude of uh, 4,000 meters above sea level. Uh, these black cones were formed on single eruptions made of deep magmas that reach 1,000 to 1,100 uh, Celsius degrees. Many lava flows go through faults and fluvial valleys, and the area is not protected. And of course, it may be in risk due to the closeness to national roads and the possible use of volcanic cinders for the improvement of road, road networks. Now we are moving southwards in La Rioja province. We have this national park which shows red rocky outcrops of Triassic age uh, that were formed in an emigraben basin. We can find sandstones in walls of about uh, 150 meters high and these rocks belong to sedimentary environment that existed during the Paleocene. Um, they are the result of uh, strong running waters and uh, intense wind, and so they expose fossils of tetrapods, and there are also some uh, predecessors of dinosaurs. These uh, features turn the area into a World Heritage Site because they represent outstanding examples of major stages of Earth's history. So finally, we want to go to the south and introduce you to Perito Moreno uh, Glacier, which is a discharge glacier ice slope that flows from the Andean ice field, a relict from the last glacial maximum that, as you know, happened 25 years before, a uh, thousand years before present. Perito Moreno Glacier moves two meters daily uh, on its faster part, of course, uh, because of the melting water it has on the base. The National Park, where Perito Moreno Glacier is, covers an area of 2,600 square kilometers, turning this site into one of the biggest freshwater reservoirs in the planet. There are morenic arcs located in the northern part of the Argentino Lake, where the glacier discharges, uh, that are evidence of the Laia, the Little Ice Age, and the Holocene. It is an excellent world heritage site to learn about global climate changes and also uh, glaciations. So with this uh, sort of uh, geotourist itinerary, we have wanted to show you just a very good examples of georesources of Argentina, which are not uh, a representative sample of uh, the geological diversity, but they are very good examples with uh, lots of uh, um, geodidactic potential functions and what we want to do also is since this year we will be celebrating the geodiversity international day for the first time we want to raise awareness of the geopotential of the country and especially the need to boost a geoconservation policy because as i said at the beginning in argentina we lack a national law that protects especially devoted especially to uh, geological heritage so uh, before saying goodbye, I want to show you a picture. This is a photograph of the Olivia Mount, which is an iconic mount here in Ushuaia, the end of the world. It is a mountain that lays um, by the Beagle Channel. 
the famous channel that was once sailed by the naturalist Charles Darwin, who came here during the 19th century from your latitudes in England to these latitudes here at the very end of South America. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention. I leave my contact there. If you want to learn about any of these five geological sites or any other out of the 72, and I can send you uh, further information. Thank you, uh, I, all of you, for all of you. Excellent. Thank you so much for a wonderful, wonderful presentation. And keep the questions coming in, everyone at home watching around the world. We will get to our question session shortly, but we are now going to hop over to see Lucy in Czechia. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. And after a session where we've heard about geodiversity, biodiversity and cultural aspects of heritage as well, Lucy's going to bring it all together where geodiversity meets biodiversity and culture, a case study from an abandoned limestone quarry. So with 14 minutes to round up the session, Lucy, take it away. Okay, thank you, Jack. So I will present a case study from Brno in Czechia. Uh, in the last years, there is a um, big focus on geodiversity, biodiversity and cultural relationships in literature, in papers, books and so. Uh, it, uh, these relationships may be observed in numerous sites and areas, no matter where they are located. It can be urban, rural, nat natural areas. Uh, such a case of uh, the place where uh, geopio and culture meet are abandoned quarries. Uh, here, the geodiversity is a uh, basis for biodiversity and cultural heritage or cultural issues. And uh, these issues can be found and observed both in situ, for example, uh, specific habitats, ecosystem, and also ex situ, for example, uh, extracted material used for uh, some cultural monuments and so on. Uh, abandoned quarries uh, provide numerous abiotic ecosystem services or geosystem services. Uh, for example, in Brno, there are a lot of abandoned quarries. Some of them are used for tourist purposes and climbing, so they offer kind of cultural services. Others are important from provisioning, provisioning services uh, point of view. So, for example, Jluti Kopec conglomerate quarry, where red sandstone as a typical material for Brno's medieval architecture were extracted. Or they have also supporting services. Uh, for example, the bottom of Červený Kopec sandstone quarry, where stone colony uh, emergency settlement was built, and it had a big importance for urban development of this part of the city. Uh, current promotion and consequently management and conservation is sometimes focused only on isolated aspects of landscape. So. Uh, without showing the mutual relationships between biodiversity, geodiversity and culture. So there is a need for a complex approach for the promotion of uh, geo-bioculture relationships. Uh, we des decided to propose a methodological approach, uh, which lies in a multidisciplinary approach. And uh, the, um, based on this, we uh, uh, we included both earth science research and humanities research. Then we identified a particular ecosystem within the, uh, the abandoned quarry, uh, described and assessed them uh, according to grace classification. Here is a classical uh, schema, uh, schem, uh, and knowledge services which are defined by gray are included in cultural cultural. Uh, services. And then we included or we decided to use a uh, mind mapping, which is, uh, which is a tool that simplifies learning process by visualization of structural aspects of knowledge. Uh, it represents a shift from traditional and rather passive learning process to more active way of obtaining new knowledge. And uh, such a mind map, uh, it's a kind of uh, 
tool uh, can bring deeper insights in the process of uh, analyzing a relationship in a single area and uh, it can bring uh, deeper insights into uh, exploring the connections between geodiversity, biodiversity and culture. So we merge uh, these two approaches. Uh, it uh, offered a framework for a geotourist map, which is going to serve as a tool for environmental education and also as a tool for integrated promotion of geodiversity, biodiversity and cultural issues in our study area, which is Hardy Quarry. It's an old limestone quarry or system of several limestone quarries. Uh, it does not consist only of uh, limestone, but also there are some outcrops of uh, granite diorite and uh, some quaternary sediments also. And uh, thanks to its morphological diversity, it is very uh, diverse landscape. Uh, so uh, it is a basis for different ecosystems. Uh, concerning biodiversity aspects, we can find the original Oak Beach forest, forest step, step formation, system of small lakes, uh, which uh, was create, were created thanks to specific hydrogeological situation, and of course, quarry walls and debris, debris cones with specific uh, vegetation, pioneer species, and so on. Uh, historical and cultural aspects, uh, aspects are represented by historical mining and grazing, and then uh, as I said, uh, some no, limestone was extracted here for a burning lime and as a building or decoration stone. Uh, it, uh, during the 20th century, it has raised a big intensity, but uh, today it was left, uh, or a few years ago, it was left to itself, uh, and majority of quarries uh, <coughs> Uh, were left as they were, and so this proved to be the best solution in terms of nature conservation. It, in parts of the area are protected, like natural monuments or important landscape elements, and it is uh, generally considered an uh, important area for recreation and tourism in Brno, which is quite a big city. So here are the results of ecosystem services approach. Uh, we defined four, uh, four uh, types of ecosystem. First, abandoned quarry, including rocky outcrops and quarry walls. Then, wetlands on the bottom of uh, quarry. Then, karst plain and surrounding slope covered with debris forest. And uh, sudden oriented slope with steppe forest vegetation. For every of these ecosystems, we defined uh, and described uh, particle geodiversity elements. For example, wetlands, there is a hydrologic components, sediments, limited extension of like littoral processes, accumulation, and uh, wet but shallow soils, for example. Then for every ecosystem, we did uh, uh, classification of ecosystem services regulating, supporting, provisioning, culture, knowledge. Uh, when I take an example, abandoned quarry, so uh, it provides all the services. It regulates uh, like local climate concerning supporting services. It is important for, for habitats, uh, provisioning services. Uh, it's related to construction materials, cultural services. It contributes to uh, health and well-being is also aesthetically uh, interesting. It has uh, quite big cultural uh, meanings and concerning knowledge services, it uh, has a big contribution to scientific research, especially stratigraphy, as there is a uh, hiatus between uh, Devonian and uh, Jurassic limestones. So then uh, we elaborated a mind map where in the middle, there is uh, just hardy limestone quarries, and then there are some segments, geomorphology, geology, living nature, current use of the site, and uh, cultural aspects. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if 
it is visible, but uh, if anyone is interested, I can send it up or post it somewhere. And from these uh, single points, there are another points, uh, for example, in geomorphology, natural landforms, anthropogenic landforms, and so on. Then we can go to quite a, a big detailness. So then we merged uh, these two approaches and we uh, proposed a draft of geotourist map. Uh, in the middle, there is a uh, there is a area a view of the site of air or area with specific sites. But uh, the description is not limited only to geo geodiversity aspects of the sites, but it includes also uh, the biota culture meanings, historical use of the landscape, fauna, flora, and so on. On the reverse side, there is a geological and tourist map, practical information about the accessibility of the sites, uh, about the safety, uh, and also there are some links uh, to uh, interesting documents or uh, websites. So to conclude, uh, abandoned quarries are specific areas where geodiversity is closely related to biodiversity and culture, and these relationships are expressed both in situ and ex situ. In the study area of Hadi, uh, this was confirmed by Abiotic Ecosystem Services Assessment, that also served as a conceptual bias base for creating a geotourist map. Application of uh, the mind mapping proved to be a quite good way how to capture and describe the relationships, geo culture within the area. Uh, merging these two approaches uh, led to better understanding to the web of geo culture relationships. Uh, this geotourist map uh, could serve as an effective tool for environmental education and also for formal education for example, for geography, biology, or history. And also it can uh, serve as a product that enable visitors uh, to appreciate geodiversity uh, is very important for basis for biodiversity and cultural heritage. Uh, this, uh, this approach, uh, I mean, merging uh, uh, geo, <laughs> geo to, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, ecosystem services approach and uh, mind mapping is not limited just to creating educational material, but it may be useful as a starting point and solid basis for uh, designing or proposing integrated conservation, promotion, interpretation and management of natural and cultural heritage. And I think it may be applied in other area, other areas where geodiversity underpins biodiversity and cultural heritage. And as the method of mind mapping is relatively easy to uh, understand, uh, it may be uh, local communities and uh, local stakeholders may be also involved in the process, which can contribute to the uh, better understanding uh, of geodiversity importance. So that's all from me and thank you. If you have any questions, just ask or write. Thanks. Thank you, Lucy for wrapping that all together at the end of the session there. And a reminder, if you have any questions, do keep them coming in on the comments. I am now at this point going to invite all of our speakers back onto the screen so that they can have a lovely discussion with us. Uh, and I think I'm then we are one more. I thought we were one short. There we go. Right, we have some questions coming in. Um, firstly, I, as it's the most recent one there, just to note that uh, Rowena would love to see your mind map, uh, oh, Lucy. So sure. perhaps, perhaps you can uh, get in touch via email or share it on the um, share I'm it on the Discord. 
Uh, yes, uh, I'm not sure if uh, here is it possible to get bigger, so I will share it uh, maybe on Discord or I can send it to email or so. Wonderful, so. great idea. And also, uh, Laura is thanking you all for your brilliant presentation. So thank you, Laura, for that as well. Right, on to the questions. And on, as on with all the questions, if any of the other speakers want to chip in with their thoughts, there's lots of overlapping topics here. Do feel free, don't wait for me to call on you. You just shout up. Um, we have a question from uh, for Amina yes. from Marton, asking if there is a countrywide inventory or a commonly used evaluation method in Morocco. Uh, I can say no. Mm -hmm. They don't have national inventory. They have. I have just. Uh, I say that a personal initiative to do it here in Morocco. I'm the first one, and I can say that uh, here in Morocco uh, we started uh, to use different ex existing methodology uh, to inventory and quantitative assessment. For his question, I can say that they don't have national uh, inventory. Thank you very much for that. And Martin is keeping the questions coming. We're going to go over to a question to Atone. Uh, Martin asks, how difficult uh, was it to access base data for the assessment? And is the 10 by 10 kilometer grid in a balance with the scale of the used thematic data. Thank you very much, Jack, and thank you very much, uh, Martin, for the for the questions. Uh, concerning the first question, actually, there is all data were available online from the platform GeoGuian and uh, and a government based uh, um, um, cartographic database which is online, so it's all open data. Just few data were obtained through my PhD that I did also in French Guiana, and are related, for example, to gold mining at Cadastre in uh, 2017, for instance. Uh, but uh, otherwise, all data were uh, relatively easily accessible. The problem is not the data which are accessible now, it's the data that are still uh, not uh, uh, collected, let's say like that. Uh, concerning the second question, actually, uh, it is a question. It is a problem, in a, an issue that we asked ourselves at the beginning. We tried with a five square meters, a uh, square kilometers. Sorry, with a twenty square kilometers. And finally, we based this choice mainly on uh, uh, existing literature concerning uh, geodiversity assessment in uh, in similar geological areas uh, with uh, a similar uh, uh, spatial extent. And so we decided to uh, choose the a 10 square kilometers grid, which is what, which was the most representative. And so in balance with the scale, as you said. And uh, for the final question, actually, yes, there are indeed some some indices that are overrepresented, and we try to go a bit uh, more in detail about uh, such topic uh, in uh, in the article, in the discussion of the article, because the main uh, the main problem about the geodiversity assessment in some environment, as I said, it's uh, the availability of data and um, and their spatial distribution. For example, uh, mineral diversity, it was uh, mineralogical diversity was mainly collected in the most prospected area for mining purposes. So you might have a bias in some areas which are very diverse, but they are not being prospected for, uh, for, uh, for mining uh, interest, you know what I mean? Uh, and um, the same is from paleontological data, which are not actually available at the moment. But uh, but uh, so there are some uh, some uh, sub index which is uh, been under or overrepresented in this case. Excellent. So I, I Thank I, you I, very I much. Thank and you very we much. go over to um, Silas because uh, Martin has another question. Thank you, Martin, for all your you apologize for being talkative, but it's very useful having these lovely questions from you. So thank you. Um, Martin asks Silas if there's a way to use the wonderful icons in your first slide. Uh, are you able to share them? You, you've seemed to uh, have impressed people with your design. But are, can you share them with other people to use? <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Martin, I think that my my design and the, my uh, 
everything that I that I make that I made, it's possible to share. Uh, I put one condition for you: it's uh, shared to the the Sir Dojo Park logo in your presentation. I can send for for you at a uh, uh, address of you. And the uh, other thing I would like to thank to the the Lucy Libakova for the inspiration for make my 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 paper uh, without your methodology I, it's possible to uh, understand better the mining and the relationship with mine and cultural assets to uh, geopark territory thank you lucy okay it was a pleasure to hear this <laughs> There we go. Collaboration in action. So make sure you share your uh, contact details, Martin and Silas. We'd love to see what comes out of that. And we had a question for Irene from Marie Noël. I will put my Marie Noël. On the we, we have a, a question about the climbing routes and how you explored the ways to show some geological information on these. Of course, it some of these are highly inaccessible localities, but what, what do you think about making geological interpretation available on climbing routes? Uh, thank you very much for your question. It's quite the core of the project because we are working on this and uh, we have uh, main two ideas. Mm, one is to put, uh, for example, on site where possible at the base of the climbing wall, a sort of explanation trying to connect the um, the rock features with uh, this, the the rock uh, the, the rock climbing uh, uh, techniques and uh, um, we have uh, already experienced it uh, with schools uh, in Italy for example and it uh, looks like uh, an interesting uh, uh, objective for the future. We will discuss it in the meeting in September, so it's a, a very important uh, core topic. Moreover, um, uh, we are working on putting uh, uh, this information also on the 3D models that we are uh, generating. So the idea is also to use these multimedia tools to draw this route and highlight uh, which are the geological and geomorphological features that allow the climber to progress. The same should be done for trekking because trekking are different depending on the features of the of the terrain that is geological, geomorphological and, and so on. Okay. Excellent. And I wondered if uh, Lucy, having looked at quarries and with much of quarrying being a uh, great places for climbing uh, i wondered if you thought there was uh, some potential for some collaboration between the stuff that irini is talking about and your methods lucy to bring to harness that that work together any thoughts on that lucy i think that uh, yes it may be somehow included but uh, these quarries are not so important for or uh, internationally important. So I don't know if uh, maybe on met methodological uh, level we can somehow cooperate, but I think that <laughs> these are not uh, UNESCO sites and they are not of uh, such uh, importance on international level. But yes, we have quite a large amount within the city of the climbing uh, walls or climbing uh, terrains that are uh, used because Brno is not a small city, it's like uh, 400,000 uh, people and of course the number of climbers. Uh, but I think that uh, directly involving into the project, <laughs> I'm not if this is uh, possible. Uh, yes, it could be very interesting. Thank you very much. So, Soledad, a final question from me. Um, I wondered what you, you, you mentioned that Argentina currently has only really the protection law for paleontology. And I wondered if you were hopeful that um, there might be some new law and protection on the way for the important non-paleontological geoheritage of, of your country. Well, I hope so. We are working on this, uh, on geoheritage and geodiversity as a new domain of research. And 
although geodiversity is quite uh, quite um, a known uh, concept in academic circles, we need to reinforce and consolidate this term in society. And uh, together with the communities, we think that we will sometime in the near future um, start outlining uh, a specific law for geoheritage. Uh, we need to, it's urgent because uh, as you have seen, many of our geological sites are not under protection and, and definitely we need, uh, we need a law uh, devoted to, to geoheritage for itself. Excellent. Well, at that point, we are we will have to draw this session to an end. Uh, session six starts in about eight minutes time. So we'd like to see you there. The links are on the Discord server and in your emails. Remember, it's not the same link as now. And a reminder to all the presenters in session six that you need to get the new presenter link from your email, um, which was just sent out in the last few hours. Thank you so much to the six wonderful speakers who have spoken in session five. We thank you once more. Wonderful, wonderful talks. And we will see you again in about eight minutes for session six. Thank you, everyone. See you again soon. Okay.